So what we're going to be doing today is setting up a video surveillance system for my office. Well, we're going to be testing it out today. And a special thank you to all my patrons who, without your support, this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about supporting the channel you love. Thank you. So what we're going to need is a few things. These are Rio Link cameras. And so this is a Rio Link RLC 410-5 megapixel. Uh, next we got this Cuddy PoE switch. And so this is the Cuddy 6 port 10100M PoE plus switch. FS1006P. And the thing about PoE switches, if you're doing video, you don't actually have to have over 100 megabits per second at the moment. So this was the cheapest one that I could get on Amazon. I'll leave a link for it in the description below. Finally, a bunch of cables. And I got Cat6 cables because basically they were the same price as the regular cables. And these are from Cables Direct. Uh, I got five of them because they came in a pack of five. And sorry I'm sweating today, but it is very hot in here. Okay, so let's start looking at this stuff. And so let's start with the camera. And so, like I said, this is a real link. And so these ones are on sale on Amazon, $50 with 15% off. So it's a pretty good deal right now, but let's take a look at them. And so if we open that up, we have instructions, an ether, tiny ethernet cable, some screws, some cable holders, and then here's the camera. And so this camera has night vision and has an ethernet port, plus it has if you hook it up into a DVR type of system. So what we're going to be doing is using Shinobi and we're going to be hooking this all up to our server. So Shinobi is a, a video surveillance software which will take the information from these cameras and then record it onto our server. So for our initial setup, uh, all we need from the box right now are the two short cables and the cameras. We don't need anything else if we're going to test it out. So next, let's take a look at our PoE switch. And we have a power cord, a CD, some feet, okay we have a CD-ROM for something, I don't have a CD-ROM drive so we're not going to be using this. And then we have our simple switch here and let's put on our feet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug this in and then we're going to take one of these short cables, plug it in here and then plug it into our router. And then we're going to take the two cameras and plug them into here. It should be pretty straightforward. Oh, I wanted to just show you something about this. So if you look at the router here, uh, it has CCTV off and on. And so basically what this is is a long range uh, ability so then it's over 25 meters I think these are all the yellow is all the PoE switches this port or this port either one uh, is to attach to your switch or your router so then you can access the footage from the cameras and this is so you can attach an NVR and let's take a look at what that means NVR means a NVR means it's an IP camera uh, recording device. So instead of using your server, or this is a way to, you can add your NVR and actually copy from your NVR to your server too. So it's just a little extra thing. And so why I bought this particular one is it was the cheapest one on Amazon. And so let's see how it works out. 
So first thing is we're going to plug in that cable. We're going to take one of these cables, plug that into here, and then we're going to plug this into our switch, which is right over here. And then we have to plug in our power supply. And so our light's on, so we have a link. And we're going to plug in our other cable into one of the Ethernet cables. And then into the Cuddy. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is download the Rio Link app for our phone. And if you go to your appropriate app store, you'll find that. And once that's installed, then we're going to set up our cameras and basically uh, you'll give a name to each camera and a password to each camera. And so once we have those, then we can move on to the next step, which is installing Shinobi. And then sh with Shinobi, we'll be able to access and record from those cameras. So I wanted to show you one thing first, though. You'll see there is two basic uh, Shinobi apps. And so one is the official Shinobi by Shinobi. And the other one is called My Goaler, which is down by the at the bottom there, and it says Shinobi Docker. And you'll notice that both of these have over a million downloads. So if we take a look at the Shinobi Docker image, and we scroll down, and we look right here, you can see that it was built on the mgoler Docker image. And if we go back, you can see this one was updated a year ago, and the mgoler one was updated three days ago. So in this instance, the mgoler one is the one that we're going to use because it is the most up-to-date one. So the first thing that we want to do is go to Open Media Vault. Because this is continuously recording or recording quite a bit if there's motion, we do not want this to be on our regular RAID array. If possible, it is better to have this on a separate disk because this is going to be writing to a disk quite a bit. And so I suggest that you have your data disks of everything else on one RAID or one disk, and then have separately a disk just for uh, recording your videos from your cameras. So on this computer, I just have the one disk. But if we go to Portainer, you can see that I don't have a lot going on here. So basically, I'm only using this for Shinobi. Now, if we go back to the MeGoler Shinobi Docker page, we're going to scroll down to where it says Start Shinobi, just type. And what we're going to do is just copy this, open up a writing program. I opened up WordPad, and then just paste that in there. And so basically, we need to change three things the three paths, so path to this directory, that directory, so on, and with our absolute path. And so how we find our absolute path is we go to shared folders. And if you don't have it already, you would click on the down arrow, click on columns, click on absolute path. And then that will give you the absolute path. And you can right click on that, click inspect, Double click on the path and then copy. Close that. Go back to our Word document. And down at the bottom here, we're going to put a few spaces. And then we're going to put our path. So basically, we need three. We need a config. We need MySQL. And then we need videos. This last one we leave just as is. So we're going to just copy that. Paste that in, then do the next two. Clean up anything extra. We're going to add in one other thing here. And so we're going to hit Enter. And we're going to type in space space name equals Shinobi, and then put a slash. And so why we're doing this is so that when we actually install this, then uh, our Docker will have the name Shinobi uh, in Portainer Otherwise, it will create a random name for the container. So this just makes it easier. So next, we're going to log into Putty, uh, which I've already logged into. And then copy this, and then paste it in. And then that will start downloading. 
And then while that's downloading, time for a cup of coffee. So once that's done downloading, then we're going to go to Portainer. And here you can see Shinobi is running and it's on port 8080. So we're going to copy our IP address, paste that in there, go to colon 8080, hit enter. And so actually you can't do anything at this page. And so what we need to do is go in as a super user, create a user, and then we can log in at this page. So let's see how we do that. So if we go back to the directions, you'll see that we need to go to 8080 slash super, and then we need to log in as admin at shinobi.video, and our password is admin. So let's put slash super. So our user is admin at shinobi.video, our password is admin, then hit enter. Next, we're going to add a user, so we'll just click add in the middle of the page. So here you'll put in your email address and then you'll need a password and then click save. And so now go up to the IP address, get rid of the slash super, hit enter, type in our email address, put in our password and then hit login. So for this next section, I saw all sorts of complicated ways to add in IP cameras, but there's actually a really simple way to install them using the GUI here. So let's do that. So you can read these articles, but we're not going to do that right now. So go over to the left hand side, click on your email address and then click on ONVIF. And so what we need to do here is put in the IP address of our first camera. And how we find that is simply we go to our router. And for me, the cameras are ETH zero for some reason before they actually said their names. Uh, but you can see here is on 170, one is on 171 is one is on 120. So we need to enter the IP address here. And I found the range, uh, if you put in an IP address it, uh, range, it didn't work. We want to put in 8000. And for our user, we want to be admin. And then we need to put in the password for the camera. And then once we've done that, we click search. And so over here on the right hand side, it now has all the information that we need to install our camera on Shinobi. And the awesome thing is all we have to do is click on the copy button here. And then that copies everything into Shinobi. And basically we're gonna do this for both. But before we do that, we're gonna actually change the name here. So this is camera one, and then save that. We're gonna go back, ONFVIF. Our separate, second camera was on 120, and it has a different password, so we're gonna click search again. There's our second camera. We copy that, and we're gonna change this name to two, and then click save. Now, if we double click the First box, it comes up one and double click two. There's one and two. So there are two cameras. And really at this point, you can stop here. Uh, some people like being very complicated and making this as efficient as possible. I find this works for me. But how you would modify the files more is you would click on the wrench for monitor settings. And then you have all sorts of different things that you can change none of which you really need to. And what I found with changing these settings is you just wanna change one at a time, restart the camera, see what happens. If it works, move on. If it doesn't work, delete that, then move on to your second thing. So that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe. And this is how you install Shinobi to make your own video surveillance system. Bye-bye.